Hello and welcome to the Lofty End Scaler. I'm Curtis, the Lofty End Scaler, and today we're going to be talking about uh, DCC control systems. Now in YouTube, um, it may have messed up a little bit. Um, I'm still trying to figure out how to do the YouTube live whole thing. I had a thumbnail and I had the description and everything, but I'm not sure what happened. Um, it's uh, Anyway, it might say something about a switch, but this is about DCC systems. So stay tuned and we'll get right on it. So let's talk about DCC systems. Let's go back here. Let's talk about these. There's all kinds of DCC, uh, digital command control systems for model railroading. And um, there's a lot of different brands, a lot of things to choose from. And a lot of it boils down to personal preference. Maybe you're a member of a club that uses Digitracks, and so it makes sense for you to have a Digitrax system. Maybe you know somebody else that has an ESU system, so they can help you with that, so it makes sense to have an ESU system. And so there's a lot of variables that go into it. When I was researching it, for some reason, um, I was drawn to the Roco Z21 system. And primarily is because I've got young grandkids and, and the, the kids, they have iPods and they're very, very visually oriented. Uh, the Digitrax, the NCE, those systems haven't changed their handsets for decades. They're the same thing that they pretty much came out with when they first came out. I'm not saying that they're not functional. I'm not saying that they're not great systems. They are. They're very good systems. But when you talk about younger kids, like my grandkids, they're more interested in visual type interfaces that are colorful and cool to look at. And I know that there's apps on phones and things like that. Um, but when we get to the Roco Z21, I'll kind of show you what I'm talking about. So for me, I selected the Z21. But let's start at the beginning and let's take a look at the Digitrack system um, that's out there. So here's the Digitrack system and I'm showing two different versions. And uh, one version here is uh, uh, the, the Zephyr, and the Zephyr is actually just a, um, oh, I don't know, it's, it's, it's a base entry-level system. Uh, if you buy this, you're not going to be limited to just what this system can do. You can add on to it. Digitrax made it so you can add on to this system and make it uh, what you want, uh, expand it. So let's say you start off with a layout that's only a couple locomotives, or a locomotive, this would be just perfect for something like that, small. If you're gonna be doing all sorts of computer control and have multiple uh, uh, locomotives, have multiple controllers attached to the system and things like that, you may wanna steer away from this and go with the system that's just above my head here. And that's, that's a bigger system, which can accommodate multiple handsets and more locomotives, it has more power, uh, to put through the tracks to support all those locomotives. Digitrax is a great system and they have got great customer support. Every time I've emailed Digitrax, they've emailed me right back and with a, with a solution to my question. And there's a huge base of people that use Digitrax out there. So if you get stumped on something with a Digitrax system, it's easy to find someone that has an answer or a resolution to that problem. It's not like you're gonna be out in the cold and, um, you know, this is system is used worldwide. Uh, it's an American system, so it's going to be used more in America than maybe over in Europe. But there's still a lot of people in Europe that use the Digitrax, too. There's no doubt. And they have decoders and, and, and stationary decoders and everything that goes with it. Digitrax also developed a thing called LocoNet. And it looks like a telephone cable um, uh, that plugs into the system. and um, it, it communicates to all the devices on the network. So you could have switch, uh, things like that, switch motors um, and uh, uh, stationary decoders, and everything would talk through it through the system, okay? So the only Digitrax I've ever owned is I've owned the Zephyr, which is right up here. So, um, and it's still in the box. So, so let's go on to the next one, uh, NCE. So I have owned both of these systems, and I love the NCE system. Um, it's a great system. The one on the left 
is called a power cap system. And the power cap system is basically an all-in-one. You see a plug in front of it, and you just plug it into the wall. It's the power supply, everything plugged into that handset. And so it's everything you need right there in the handset. Um, it can be a little um, limiting uh, in that uh, you may not have enough power to run a bunch of locomotives. Um, but still, it's a great system to start off with. And I think I may have messed up on the, on the photograph above me, um, but they also, NCE makes a Powerhouse Pro or Power, I don't want to say it's Powerhouse Pro. It's anyways, it's a bigger version. It comes with a box. And I think I, I had the wrong picture up there. It comes with a box. It's got higher wattage uh, or amps to it. So it can drive more and more locomotives and accessories and things like that. Again, if you're just starting off, you just want to maybe go with the NCE power cap. And that's all you need to run two or three locomotives. It's a great system. It's a very intuitive system. The handheld, the, the hand thing that you hold in your hand, the controller is a very, very nice controller. It's, it, and it's the wheel, there's a wheel in the middle of it and you can adjust speed up and down. If you're shunting, up is forward, bad down is backwards. You can program it any which way you want. Um, it's a very, very intuitive system. It's a really a nice system. And uh, I never had a problem with my NCE system. So those are the two kind of major uh, players in Digitrax. I mean, there are other ones. There's Prodigy, and then there's um, uh, some others. But for me, some of those systems are limited. You won't be limited if you go with the Digitrax or the NCE systems. So you, there's always a potential to grow. And, um, and, and they make like a really good product, okay? So, um, but I am gonna jump across the pond over to Europe. Now, kind of DCC, I don't know where DCC started, but the first time I saw DCC was with Merklin Trains, or Merklin Trains. And this would have been way back in the late 80s, early 90s, um, maybe before that. Um, and they started putting decoders in locomotives. Now, I have some very, very original Arnold locomotives with some of the original decoders in them. And when I put them on a modern DCC system, uh, I can get it to go forward or I can get it to go backwards, but I can't reverse direction. It doesn't understand modern DCC technology. These chips are so old, they're like the first generation lens DCC decoders. And so they won't function at all properly on a modern DCC system. And uh, when I was talking with somebody at Lens, they said, well, that really should be in a museum because we don't even have any examples of those early decoders. You know, you're the first person we talked to that actually has um, those uh, early decoders. Um, so it's, it's um, uh, I have to replace all those decoders if I want to use them. But let's go over here to um, Eulenbrock. So Eulenbrock is, um, I want to say they're German or that are around that area, um, and they make a really nice system. They have accessories coming out the the, the wazoo for DCC. Um, the difference between um, uh, something like a Eulenbrock and the Roco Z21 is that the local nets are not compatible. So in other words, I can't take a Eulenbrock uh, local net device and put it on a Digitrax local net um, because of the way it's wired. And uh, I think that the difference between um, there's some Iron, Iron Planet Hobbies sent me an email. And they told me the, told me the difference between the, um, the 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 two local nets is that the Euro models the booster on off signal isn't sent out on the T side. So that being said, you kind of have to use um, European devices. Um, I've not had a problem with getting European devices for my Z21. Um, I would love to have some sort of converter that would allow me to do uh, the Digitrack side. That sounds like my cats are fighting. Uh, Digitrack side as well as um, the Euro side. But right now I'm kind of confined to uh, European type um, uh, devices. Now, when we're, when we're talking about Eulenbrock here, the device on the left is a full-fledged unit. The device that's above me, uh, that that little white box and the controller, uh, that's the whole system. So that's kind of like uh, the NCE uh, power cap. Uh, that's their version of it. Um, the, the handset is still plugging into that device, 
and that but that device is your complete DCC system. Okay, so you can start simple, you can or go big. Um, Eulenbrock is not really sold over here, but I just want to kind of give you an idea of what's out there. So the Eulenbrock, that screen, even though it's not color, I believe is touch screen. So you can actually touch the screen and select what you want on it and then uh, program it easily. It's a little bit more visual than something like Digitrax or NCE. Going on, so let's go to the Roco Z21. Now the Roco Z21, this is what I have. And it appealed to me because of the interface. Uh, you use iPad, uh, iPhone, you can use an Android o iOS device. Uh, you can see in the picture above me that the um, that the uh, device, you can have two locomotives on the iPad side by side, and then it'll also let you control routes. And But here, this on the iPhone, um, on the Android device showing there is the same thing. Um, on the back of this thing, uh, it allows you to do several different things. So you've got your, um, let's see here. <laughs> I got to find it here. Uh, let me bring this up here. So you've got your main track, you've got a slot for a programming track, and you've got a slot for a sniffer bus. Well, what's a sniffer bus? So if I want to use my Digitrax, let's say, I want to use the Roco Z21, but I also want to use the sniffer bus, I can plug my Digitrax unit into the sniffer bus. So I take the two track outputs from the Digitrax, and it goes into the sniffer bus. And then I can use my Digitrax system uh, on that sniffer bus through the Roco Z21. But the primary DCC control unit is going to be the Z21. So you have a B bus, which is a booster bus. You have an L bus, which is your local net bus. The R bus, which is a Roco bus. Now, Roco has its own devices. So when you have the R bus, those Roco specific devices go into the R bus. The X bus, um, um, and I forget what the X bus is for. Right? Oh, it's for like lens and things like that. And then you have a CAN. Uh, connection next to the LAN, and the CAN connection would be if you had any Zemo equipment. Uh, you could plug a Zemo controller into that CAN bus. And then, of course, you have a LAN bus, um, which uh, connects to your computer. Um, the Z21 comes with its own Wi-Fi router, and so everything will be Wi-Fi. You plug the uh, Wi-Fi router in, then you take the uh, LAN connection, and you plug it into the router, and then plug it into the back of the Z21, and everything is done wirelessly via Wi-Fi. So it's really um, a nice system, it's small, compact, um, but I'm actually thinking about moving over to a different device. All right, stay tuned, we're working at it. To give you some more ideas on the Z21, this is a handheld unit for the Z21. So you're not restricted to the iPad or the iPhone or your Android device, you can actually have uh, an actual controller with a with a knob, okay, and so that's what this device is. And the reasonably priced, I think, this particular handheld device uh, is like under a hundred dollars. So, and you can pick some up, use some of the older ones that are similar to it um, for like less than that for fifty bucks, okay. To give you another idea with the Z21, uh, this here is the actual um, screenshot of if you're gonna do routing with it. So you can actually take a photograph of like your switching yard and then place switches where the uh, switch icons where the switch controls are. And then you program each one of those switch icons to activate that individual switch. So in other words, if I have a fairly complex yard and I've got like 10 or 20 switches, I may forget what number those switches are. But if I have a simple graphic diagram like this, I can just reach down, touch it and change the switch and not have to worry about what number it is. And so when we talk about interfaces and things that uh, attract kids, um, like my grandkids, they just love, you know, uh, the iPod and, and the iPod Touch. They love that graphic interface. And so when they play with trains, my trains, they love this interface because they can do it on their iPhone. And, and the kids, you know, they're used to working iPhones. They're used to doing all that technology. And so this really, uh, makes it a lot of fun for them. They don't have to think about what numbers and all this stuff. They just touch the touch the icon. 
And if you look on the left of this screen here too, um, you'll see that all the controls for your locomotive, your F controls, your headlight, your horn, whatever, can be programmed into those buttons. And you just touch those buttons and uh, the icon that's appropriate for whatever you're doing, if it's a bell, if it's a horn, whatever, and then it'll activate that on that particular locomotive that you have selected. So it's really a handy system. Uh, Roco Z21s are available here in the US. Um, so there are dealers that sell them um, and so you can actually get them. And, and I can't remember, they're around three or $400. Um, they're not uh, terribly expensive, but they're not horribly expensive. Like the next one we're gonna look at. Now the next one I considered as well, and that is the ESU uh, ecosystem. Now the ESU ecosystem is actually, uh, you know, we're familiar with ESU and their sound cards and their sound uh, decoders. Well, this is their digital command control system. And it's just absolutely, if you ask me, it's just a beautiful device. That color screen is touch screen. So you can touch whatever you want on it and um, it'll just uh, accept, you know, the commands. It's, it's a very graphical interface. The reason I didn't pick it is because it's a fairly big unit, that unit, and I have to have some place to put it. The um, uh, the unit itself, I'd have to have some place to put it. The Roco Z21 um, doesn't actually uh, take up any space. I can hide it someplace, and I don't actually have to use, I have to plug the local net cable and then the track bus into it. But other than that, I can kind of tuck it away. This one I kind of have to have out front and center. And that's okay, but I really don't have the space for it. But the graphic interface, the color interface is really nice. Um, here's kind of a photo of the interface. Uh, you can pick the uh, trains and then the direction and then all the icons on the side give this uh, the ability to run um, all the sounds off the locomotives. So that being said, uh, I'm trying to think, oh, and then they have this, uh, here's another screenshot of, of, you can put your whole track diagram in the uh, ESU ecosystem. So here's the track diagram. Again, it's touch screen, so I can touch uh, the individual switches and they'll switch. Now the device on the left is their new handheld device. And this device, you'll see it has a nice big round knob on it. And when you have the locomotive selected, let's say you have the locomotive selected on the handheld device and on the eco, ESU ecosystem. If I turn the handheld device, uh, the knob on that handheld device, it'll turn the knob on the base station. If I turn the knob on the base station, it'll turn the knob on the handheld device. So they're motorized. So you can tell when someone's adjusting that knob because it's doing it by itself. It's like a ghost inside of the machine. Ghost in the machine? Isn't that a movie? Anyway, so the handheld device there on the, on the left is actually based on an Android operating system. And so the operating system can be uh, fully upgraded and um, expanded as time allows and whenever they want to update the software and it's wireless, it's, it's done via Wi-Fi. So very nice uh, system. It is expensive for the ecosystem. You're going to spend like around $600 for this ecosystem. So, you know, you, you may or may not want to use it. I don't know, um, but it's an option. Okay, there are other. Or this is just kind of an overview of everything that you maybe you want to look at. Okay, the next one um, is actually we're going to go to the Netherlands, and this is the one that's super cool. So this is DigiKeys, and I'm I'm probably pronouncing it wrong. So it's DigiKeys Keys. I don't know. Is anyone from the Netherlands out there? Um, so if you look at this. Particular, um, uh, hang on a second. If you look at this particular one, and this is what I think is so cool. The Wi-Fi is built into it, so you don't have to buy any type of Wi-Fi. You've got an IR controller built into it. Uh, it'll take your LAN connection. Um, it'll take uh, the, X, uh, the 88N connections, which is like um, the old uh, detection systems that the Marklin used to use, Loconet B, so I can actually take my Digitrax and plug it into it. Uh, my devices from Digitrax and plug them into it. It'll take Loconet T, which is all my European uh, Loconet. 
Uh, it'll take uh, your lens connection. Um, basically, it's got all the connections that uh, you could ever want built into this. All right. And um, it's got the built-in Wi-Fi. So I have a Wi-Fi controller. It works. The only thing that doesn't work with this at the moment, and there's going to be a software update to fix it, is if you're going to have multiple units on a Digitrax. So you plug in your Digitrax uh, controller and you, you do the MU where you want to have multiple units. Uh, it won't. It won't do that, but that's a software update, and they're working on it. They're going to do a software update. Um, the adjustable power supply is from 15 to 24 volts. Here's another photograph of this one. Oops, of this one. Um, so, you know, it's it's really a cool device, and I really would like to play with it and see how I like it. Um, it's it's interesting because what attracts me is I can use the Digitrax equipment with uh, my Euro uh, equipment. Now, now when we're talking about MU stuff too, uh, multiple units. Um, for instance, I can't speak on Uhlenbrock and I can't speak on you know, the ecosystem, uh, ESU system, but for like the, the Roco Z21, when you do multiple units on Digitrax, uh, it actually programs the decoders in the locomotives, from my understanding, okay? So when you program four units, um, to work as one unit, it's programmed into the decoders this way, and then it sends the unit, okay? So then when you break it up, then it reprograms those decoders, okay? For Roco Z21, it's a software programming. So it doesn't tell the decoders that they're working together or they're assigned as one unit. The decoders still think they're operating independently. It's just in the software itself, they combine those locomotives. Just a little bit different. Uh, Europeans, I don't think, lash up locomotives like uh, we do. Um, for me, since I'm running passenger stuff, it wasn't as a big deal. I would sort of like to have that feature that Digitrax has, uh, and I definitely want to be able to use the Digitrax local net. So that's why this uh, DR5000 from DigiKeys uh, is uh, very interesting to me. And the best thing at all about it is that it's like $200 for this digital unit. So um, by itself. Now, uh, you don't have any hand controllers or anything like that, but maybe you can pick up used hand controllers from Digitrax or whomever um, on eBay. Uh, if you're going to be hooking it to a computer like I am using JMRI or Railroad & Co. software, then this will plug straight into that and you can do everything on the computer. So this is an interesting option. Okay. Now, they are coming out with a command station that has knobs on it. Um, but it hasn't come out yet, so I didn't show that. Um, I'm trying to think what else. So, Digitrax, uh, if you're here in the U.S., it makes perfect sense to have Digitrax, NCE, both great companies, but this was just kind of an overview to kind of show you there are options other than just those two. Um, and uh, you just have to wait and see and judge for yourself um, who and what system you want to go with. Uh, I see there's a couple of messages here. Uh, good. Hey, William, you're the next town over from NCE Factory. Hey, if you're over in the NCE town, would you bop over there and tell them to update their website? Yeah, their website sucks. So, I mean, talk about it's like a fifth grader programmed it or something. It's really, really terrible. Um, yeah, uh, Bruce, yeah, uh, NCE is a great system. Um, yeah, the PowerCab Pro, that's, uh, yeah, that's the that's the high-end, that's uh, the uh, heavy-duty one, the one with um, four watts or five watts of power. So, um, yeah, you know, they're all great systems, and it's just personal preference. It's kind of like cars. You, um, um, you know, some people buy General Motors their whole life. Some people buy Ford their whole life. If you grew up running Digitrax, you probably want to stay with Digitrax. There's nothing that Digitrax can't do. There's nothing that NCE can't do, because they're built around um, the peripherals are, are built around the Digitrax system. 
uh, with local net and things like that. And you don't actually have to have local net. You can find devices that don't use local net. But um, I just happen to like local net. Um, okay, William says, have you looked at the techie vertical DCC++ on Arduino? Um, I haven't looked at that. Um, and I, for me, systems have to be relatively plug and play. And maybe the Arduino system is. But every time I look at Arduino, I mean, it's people who like to tinker a lot. So JMRI, um, I'm going with Railroad & Co. software for my computer because it's drag and drop for the most part. Yes, you know, there are some macros you have to do, but I think they're relatively easy to do, and it's very visual for me. I'm not a programmer, and uh, you know I blow things up more than I actually get them working so uh, for instance I blew up an atlas switch how do you blow up an atlas switch well I did it um, you know and uh, I know there's like a DCC there's a DCC sprog so it's another like little box and uh, you can hook it straight to your computer so that's definitely an option if you're gonna go straight to computer control you know if you're just getting into this hobby this is kind of what this video is for to just give you an overview if you've been in it a while, you kind of know what you're looking at, um, and you kind of know which direction to go. But it's surprising to know, see that uh, over here in the U.S., um, there's sort of an abyss as far as knowing what's across the pond and what's available. I think that the Europeans uh, have done a wonderful job with their interface in the way they design the equipment, uh, make it attractive, make it look really nice. Uh, their controllers are nice. They're beautiful pieces of equipment. I mean, there's no denying that, you know, the the ESU ecosystem is fantastic. And if you're running ESU sound decoders, it just uh, programming the ESU sound decoders becomes a no-brainer. It's all designed to be working together. Um, Eulenbrock is more kind of a, I, you don't really hear too much about Eulenbrock, but I actually have Eulenbrock track detection systems uh, uh, you know, and uh, it's it's uh, it's more in England. They use England Eulenbrock and things like that. Um, yeah. So William says, uh, no, it is it is very techy. Yeah, like a sprog. Yeah. So, um, just you know, if you're a techy guy, go for it. You know. A lot of people like messing with that stuff. It's like, I hate bench work. You know, a lot of people love bench work. They like to work with wood. More power to you. I can't stand it, you know. So um, I want to get to the point where I'm just running. And I can mess with the computer and program my routes and things like that. So, you know, it's a journey. It's, it's learning. And as you... Uh, uh, yes, Bruce, yes. Cons Europeans make it consumer-friendly. You know, when I showed uh, my grandson the Digitrax controller and I showed him the Roco controller, it was a no-brainer. He wanted to do the Roco with the touch. You know, so we kind of have to, if we want to try, and I'm going to get on a little soapbox here, if we want to try to involve uh, younger people into the hobby so the hobby doesn't, you know, the average age in, in the hobby is, what, 60 plus? You know, we, we have to attract younger kids. And how do we do that? We have to make it less, um, we have to make it visual for them. That's what they like. They like the iPhones. They like to sweep between, you know, swipe between screens. You know, they date that way now. You know, yeah, you're cute. No, you're ugly. Yeah, you're cute. You know, really? So, but that's the way it is. They like visual stuff. Um, you know, and, and there is a learning curve even with the visual stuff, but it makes it easier. I like it when I'm programming switches on the iPad. It is so easy to program switches on the iPad with the Z21. Uh, I make the icon, assign a number to it, put it into program mode, hit the number, boom, it's done. You know, um, so. Okay, so. Guys, thank you for the comments. Um, really appreciate it. Uh, uh, you know, um, yeah, 
Bruce said, uh, I like techie, but uh, get frustrated when the learning curve is steep. Yeah. So, I mean, if the learning curve is too steep, people just give up on it. And it is, they, they say, forget it. I'm not going to do it. Um, but, you know, it is what it is, I guess. So that's why you have to pick a system that you're good with, that you think the learning curve is easy. Like if the ESU ecosystem, even though it's $600, it's easier for you to learn it and it makes you happy, go for it. So, but there's no reason why uh, it should prevent you from getting into the hobby. So like, you know, <clears throat> with the Sprog system, uh, William, $30 for a full DC. Um, you know, so there's ways to get into it uh, if you're on a budget. I'm on a budget. My wife has me on a budget all the time. So Now, you may think that I don't wear the pants in the family. I do. I do. As soon as I get done with the laundry, I can wear my pants. Yes. So my opinion flies around here, right out the window. Yeah. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching uh, the stream. Uh, it's already 33 three minutes into it. I really appreciate you guys being here. I appreciate your comments. Um, if anybody's watching this after the live stream, make comments down below. Um, again, there's all different DCC systems for everybody. So if you haven't subscribed to the, to the channel, please hit that subscribe button. Everything's backwards on the screen. Subscribe button down here. Hit the bell icon. It'll notify you every time I have a video posted up. This is two days in a row, so I thought I'd just do this for fun. But appreciate you guys being here. Like, subscribe, and we'll see you next time.